morning. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you is our prayers. Welcome to the in-person virtual services of the New Ebenezer Baptist Church, 6300 Hartford Avenue here in the city of Detroit, Michigan. I'm Pastor Wallace Mills, Jr., and hey, it is the last first Sunday of the year. It is the first Sunday in December. The Lord has blessed us and kept us and brought us together again that we might be able to lift, glorify, and magnify his name. It's in the word of God. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on to your feet all over the sanctuary. Come on to your feet as we prepare ourselves to enter into worship. If you're at home, you know what to do. Come on to your feet as well. If you drive and pull over for a moment, park that car as we come together that we might praise, lift, glorify, and magnify the name of our Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we come to rejoice in him. Welcome to the New Ebenezer Baptist Church. to the New Ebenezer Baptist Church on this morning.
Jesus' name. Reading from Psalms 18. I love thee, O Lord, my strength. Lord is my rock and my fortune, my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. I am saved from my enemies. I just read Psalms 18, 1 through 3. May the Lord have blessings on the reader here and the doer of his word. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your grace and mercy, for allowing us to see another day. Lord, we thank you for our covering of our families. Lord, we pray we need you right now. In times such as this, Lord, our state needs you, Lord. Lord, our children need you, Lord. So we pray cover our children as they go to and from school. Lord, regulate their minds and touch their hearts. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you've done, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. 
Lord, we just want to tell you we love you because you know that you've been good to us. So we celebrate and tell you thank you. You've been good to our families, Lord. You've been good to our church families, Lord. You've been good in your covering, Lord. Your mercy and your grace, Lord. You've been good to us, Lord. For you've been our provider, Lord. For you've been our sustainer, Lord. For you've been right with us. Thank you for your grace. For it covers us when we're right and when we're wrong. So right now we tell you thank you, Lord. Thank you for our pastor and his family, Lord. Thank you for our church family, Lord. Go with all those who need you, Lord. Those who lost loved ones, Lord. Comfort them, Lord Jesus, and bless them right now, Lord Jesus. We just thank you, Lord. We just praise you, Lord. We just bless your holy name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for salvation. We thank you for the cross. Most of all, we thank you for your glorious resurrection, Lord. With all power, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We bless you. Oh, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Eric. Today we are praying for all those at home and all those in rehabilitation center. So today we are praying for Deacon Thomas Anderson, Sister Naomi Burrow, Brother Christopher Burrow, Brother Benjamin Moore, Sister Yvonne Price, Sister Audrey Miller, Sister Kenyatta Kegler, Brother Dennis Slay, Reverend Leonard Jones, Brother Jim Rhodes, Brother Horace Kegler, Sister Catherine Kegler. Brother Rufus Brown, Brother Christian Brock, Sister Judy Jenkins, Sister Pearl Cotton, Sister Bernice Lee, Sister um, Shante Moki, Sister Alice Peoples, Brother O.C. Gator, Brother Andre Shannon, Sister Denise Salton, Sutton, I'm sorry, Arlie and Irma Cooper, Sister Mamie Owens, Sister Dalea Hingins, Sister Patricia Finley, Michelle and Erica London, Sister Mildred Stickland, Brother Bobby Moore, Sister Minnie Kelly, the King Girls, Sister Bonnie Douglas, Sister Wanda Cox and family in the passing of her husband, Brother Malcolm Cox, Sister Pam Nunn and the family in the passing of her brother, the Taylor family in the passing of Brother Hubert Taylor, the Perry family in the passing of Pastor J.J. Perry, the Jordan family in the passing of Sister Bobby Jordan, Dave, Pastor David Williams and family in the passing of his mother. We're praying for the Carter family, the Stevens family, the Osborne family, the Finley family, the Loritz Fam, uh, um, the Loritz and Jackson family in the passing of Sister Annie Loritz. Let us all keep all those listed on our prayer list in your prayers.
helps me appreciate the good times being grateful Ah! Uh -huh.
Come on, you all to worship him. Worship him all over the sanctuary. Worship him. Just where you are, you owe him this worship. Come on, lift him hands. Lift him hands and worship him. Oh, lift your hands. Lift your hands and worship him. Not to worship him. Lift him hands and worship him. How good he is. Anybody been through anything the Lord has brought you through? He has brought you through. He has brought you out. You ought to worship him. Tell your neighbor, just give me a minute. Let me lift my hands around you. I just want to worship him. I've been through too much. Worship him. Say it. I've been through too much. Not. Say it. I've been through too much. Not. Lord, we praise and bless you for all things. Thank you for grace and mercy. Thank you for another chance, another opportunity, another privilege to pause, to lift, to glorify, to magnify, and to thank you for all you've done. 
and is doing in our lives. Oh, Lord, bless us now as only you're able to do. As we stand with spirits of gratitude, spirits of hope, and spirits of peace. Have your way again in this worship. Have your way in preaching. Pour in. Allow us to pour out. When we leave here, we leave here the better because of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. The believer says amen and bless God. Oh, how good he is. Yes. How good the Lord is. Mm. Bless the Lord. Mm. Too much. My Lord. Just turn to one of them neighbors and say, I've been through too much not to worship him. I've been through too much not to worship him. I've been through much to worship him. I've been through too much. Come on, put them hands together and bless him how good the Lord he is. Come on, put them together. Come on, put them together. Bless him how good the Lord he is. 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 How good he is. Certainly greet you in the powerful and precious name of Jesus again, who is our risen Savior, all of our preachers, officers, members, visitors, and friends. It's just a blessing to gather into the place of worship one more time. Whether you gather with us in person or virtually, it is a blessing. It is a blessing for us to worship the Lord. Just tell somebody, it's a blessing to worship him. It's a blessing to worship him when we look back over our lives and able to see that we didn't make it this far by ourselves, but that we praise and bless God for what the Lord has done. We are praying for so many. We are praying for so many. You heard the names that were called on our prayer list. We lift all of those individuals and cover them uh, in our prayers. Praying for Reverend Sims, who was in the Beaumont Hospital. We lift him and cover him in our prayers as well on today. Uh, Sister Jasmine, who was sick at home, we're certainly praying for her. Uh, as well on today and praying for my cousin Wanda and family and the passing of her cousin Malcolm, faithful members of our home church, the New St. Luke Church. And so I'm certainly praying for you, cuz, and for your family and for your children uh, that God will certainly bless you all uh, during this move, this move, this move of God. I keep telling you all that um, we ain't in control of nothing. I just had said on the other day, on Friday, while sharing with the Taylor family, I had just said to them, God wasn't through moving. We didn't know where he would move and how soon he would move. And we couldn't even get in our beds good, and the Lord was moving again. And so we're believing God and trusting God and knowing that God is able. Tell you somebody, neighbor, he is able. He is. God is able. On last Sunday when we were leaving service, I said to you all, pray for your children. How many of y'all remember that? I said, take some time and pray for your children and cover uh, your children in prayer. And it was just a few days later that we heard of the mass shooting that took place uh, in the Oxford School District in the Oxford community and heard about the young lives that were lost young lives that were abruptly taken from us, just snatched away from us and those other lives, individuals who were shot, you know, 
families and community that is devastated, devastated, and um, trying to push our way through it. And people were calling me and said, what's going on in Detroit? And I told them, it's not Detroit, it's suburbs of Detroit. But when you say Metro Detroit, you make people think it's all happening in our city. But it does not matter where it happens at, it affects all of us. It affects all of us. It affects all of us. It affects all of our children uh, as well. And we are certainly praying for those families, praying for those school administrators and staff and superintendents and city officials. We're certainly praying, you know, for them that God in his intimate wisdom, that the Lord will certainly bless them and that the Lord would comfort them as only he is able, he is able to do. Certainly solicit your prayers for preaching. This is Sermon 1 of preaching series takes place on this day. So you all pray for me just a moment. Share with the Mount Moriah Baptist Church on Woodward as they start the process of installing their new pastor, Pastor Eddie Cooper, on today. So you all pray for pastor. It's a long day. Somebody say long day. And so you all pray for us. Watch this, beloved of God. There are many challenges. There are many challenges that, that we are facing. Our world is facing. Our communities are facing. And even our homes uh, are facing the various challenges that are going on around us today. There's so much uncertainty in society Division, there is divide in our country. Unstable families, something that we don't talk about, where murder and killing of people is seen by some as being okay. Our political legislative officers will take pictures of their families holding semi automatic weapons and put it on what they call a Christmas card and send it out and society thinks that it's all it's all okay uncertainty fear of a virus that seems like it just won't go away fear of going to school fear of living in your neighborhood living in your community fear of living while black Afraid to get pulled over just for a simple traffic ticket. Just fear. Fear seems to loom in the minds of so many individuals. When we put our children out the door, we go in prayer. Pray to when they go out. Pray while they out. Pray till they get back home. Just a sense of fear. And what's sad about it is that in the day and time in which we live, all of our leaders, whether it be the president of the United States, whether it be a local mayor, city council person, state representative, U.S. rep, a person in the house, whether it be a mom or a dad, a preacher or a deacon, all of our leaders find themselves under pressure People are trying to figure out when you're going to do something to fix what's going on around us. They find themselves facing critical pressure. You all should hear me today. Facing critical pressure. Not only are people taking their lives and political politicians are taking their lives, but pastor preachers are also taking their lives, living under critical pressure, trying to figure out what can be done. Individuals are going through. And while people are asking questions, the Apostle Paul addresses this issue to the church and says to the church, while you running off at your mouth, Paul says, there is something you ought to be doing. I need like a good 10 church members for about a good 15 minutes on today. The apostle Paul says, shut up. 
and require and do that which the Lord says to you and I that needs to be done. 1 Timothy chapter 2. He says what the church ought to be doing. What the believers ought to be doing in regard to those individuals who are striving to give leadership in a chaotic world. First Timothy chapter 2, you got it? First Timothy chapter 2, start reading at verse number 1. The apostle Paul says to us, you got an assignment. You got a charge. There is something that you ought to be doing. Look what he says in verse 1. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. Y'all got your Bibles? Watch them again. I exhort therefore first of all. If you got your Bibles, you ought to highlight some stuff. Supplication. Prayers. In a session and giving of thanks. For who? For the kings and for all of those who are in authority. He says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. First of all, supplication, prayer, in a session and giving of things. Your job is to pray. Your job is to pray. Just a few moments. Quickly watch this text of scripture. This is the first of Paul's pastoral letters where he is talking to and he is instructing the church leaders and members on how to do church right. It is the first thing that he lays out in this first letter to his son and minister Timothy on how to do church right and how it ought to be done God's way. One of the things that has always puzzled me about church and the, men, the, and the individuals who are a part of the church is your ideal of how you think things ought to be done rather than to put your thoughts to the way that God says things ought to be done. We will read the word on a daily basis and not heed the word of God. Help me preach somebody. Paul says in this particular writing uh, to Timothy that we got to pause and re-examine what God requires of us to do and how to do it right meaning how to do it in order. I said to some preachers the other day in conversation, what has happened to us is we have forgot this sentimental statement. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all other things shall be added. We were holding a conversation when, when Sunday was holy. Preach, Pastor. Sunday was holy and nothing superseded the saints of God gathering at the Lord's house for Sunday school and morning worship and BTU and evening worship to get guidance and direction on how to live the rest of the week. We gathered so we can hear what the Lord had to say to the church. And watch this here. We didn't put stuff on Sunday. 
preach pastor. We're trying, to, we're trying to figure out why society is falling apart and why society is crumbling because we didn't put stuff on the Lord's day. It was destined and designed for you and I to do what the Lord desired of us to do. We didn't, we didn't have meetings and we didn't have parties and we didn't have baby showers, preach pastor, and we didn't have bachelor and bachelorette's parties and we didn't go to the club. We didn't go to the bar. We didn't drink. The club would stay up as long, stay open as long as it could, but they knew at a certain time they had to shut it down. And we will make our way to the Lord's house whether we were drunk or sober. Whether we were right or not, we would come in smelling like liquor and can on. But we made it to the Lord's house that we could hear what the Lord had to say in preparation for the next week. The Apostle Paul writes this letter to Timothy. So that the saints would know how to do what they were doing and how to do it right. Matter of fact, in chapter 3 and verse number 15 of the same book, you might want to put that in your notes somewhere. He states that he has written so that they, meaning we, will know how we ought to conduct ourselves in God's household, which is the church. Of the living God. Let me introduce the text and then I'll be through. What the Lord really says to you and I is how we do it right here determines how we do it right out there. And most of us have forgotten the fact that individuals who are not in here is paying attention to what we're doing in here and then watching our conduct when we go out there. The Apostle Paul spends a great deal of time explaining how to grow and how to develop leaders and believers in regard to their relationship with the Lord. He spends a great deal of time talking about how to grow, how to develop leaders and especially leaders in the church. Now, I get in trouble with this here a lot of times because I often make this statement. You can't profess to be a leader and you allow the devil to conduct your agenda. You can't, you can't say that you belong over the Lord's side, but yet you refuse to do it according to the permissive will of the master. The apostle Paul addresses this stuff. He talks about growth. He talks about leaders being what God desires of them to do. And when he addresses the topic of prayer for leaders, he includes in this prayer all leaders. Somebody say all leaders. All, all, all leaders. He, he, he includes in this particular moment that prayer should be made for all leaders. Not just the pastor, not just the, build, the bishop, not just the elder, not just the, the, the apostle or whatever titles you're giving yourself in this day and time. But he says that we ought to be praying for all leaders. The president, preach pastor, the president and, and, and the governor and, 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 and the council people and, and the house of representatives and, and the all Leaders, whatever your title is as a leader, whether it's superintendent of school or principal, whatever your title is as a leader, the apostle Paul says that we are under spiritual mandate to help battle what's going on in this world. And Paul says that the only way to battle it, you got to battle it with prayer. I sure wish I had 10 of y'all real quick up in here. Just, just, a, just, a few, just a few weeks ago, just a few weeks ago, when, when the people were on trial, the fellas was on trial for killing uh, Ahmaud Aubrey, and, 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 and the preacher started showing up. Y'all remember that? The preacher, the preacher started preacher start showing up, and, 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 and the redneck racists. District uh, 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 defense attorney uh, got upset. And, and, and he said, he said to the judge, something ought to be done about, about all these preachers showing up 
in court. I sure wish I had some help up in, up in here. He said, he said, matter of fact, he said these black Baptist preachers showing up in church, uh, in the courthouse. Watch this here. And and somebody said, somebody said he was upset. I said to somebody, he wasn't upset because they were showing up. He was upset because he understood that there's power in prayer. And that if you get enough of us Negroes together and we go down in prayer, we can change. We can turn the situation upside down he he from he from georgia so he he went to sunday school before he became like he was because back then at his age you had to go to church so he heard about paul and silas praying he heard about the three hebrew boys i sure wish i had some help up in there praying he 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 heard of the fact that prayer changes things and that prayer turns things turn it around somebody said turn it around turn it turn it around prayer prayer turns it around and he made his comment and then the word went out and said hey preachers let's meet down in georgia and preachers start flying in from everywhere all over the country not to go into court but to be outside of the court and turn around and pray and watch God work it out. I wish I had five folk up in here with me, up in here. What you fail to realize, if you ever examine the story of the Hebrew boys, the Hebrew boys prayer took place before they ever got in the furnace. They said the God we serve is able. And if he don't bring us out, he's still I wish I had some help up in here. It's still able. And those who throw them into the furnace would burn up. But the boys went in and came out because of the power of. Peter went to jail. And the church went in prayer. Oh, my God. I'm at the priest part one, two, and three of this here. Church went in prayer, and the record say while they was praying, Peter was knocking on the door. And the damsel looked out there and seen who she thought was Peter. But she refused to open the door because she knew Peter was in prison. She was too young to realize that when we pray, help me in here somebody, that when we pray, God will release the bonds that hold us and set us free. Tell your neighbor, he'll set us free. The Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul takes some time in this text and addresses the issues in regard to what was known as prayer. Watch what he says, and I'm about done. Watch what he says. The Apostle Paul says, the call for us to handle what's known as uncertain times and uncertain t and territory. He says that the church is to petition God. Somebody say petition him. With supplication, prayers, and intercession. And with the spirit of thanksgiving. Preach, Pastor. Watch what he says. Petition. He says petitions, pray, is what he says. Petitions are known as an earnest request. Just ain't talking to God, but earnestly seeking the Lord, pouring out eyes, our, our innermost thoughts, and seeking God from the depths of our souls. Earnest petition. It is a serious request. It is a request that we make known to God, Jehovah, Yahweh. We make that request known unto him. Paul says, pray. Can I preach for this two light more minutes because I got, really got to go, but I really feel like preaching up in here. Look at what the, look at what the Lord says. Shut the hell up and pray. Quit putting your 
your opinion on everything and pray. Quit having a say so about some stuff. Shut up and pray. He addresses the issue. He puts the church on notice because the folk in the church is saying too much. I don't believe in this, and I, I don't believe in that, and I, I got a problem with this, and I, and I, and I got, a problem, got a problem with that, and, 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 and this going on, and that going on, and, and this happening, and, and, and that happening, and I'm just, I'm just ha pray! That's what he said. I got up this morning. I was getting dressed. They was talking about Putin and Putin putting all of his military forces down by Ukraine. And so they were interviewing people. What, what should President Biden do when he have a conversation with Putin on Tuesday? And, and everybody is giving their analysis of what should be done. And, and Paul says, pray. Oh, I wish I had some help up in here. Everybody is a political analyst. Nowadays, everybody is a doctor. Everybody is a scientist. Every, everybody know everything. Everybody got something to say about something. And just as soon as you think you got it going on, God just gets tired of you and say, I'll send another variant. I, I'll release it. Y'all ought to get this up in here because nothing happens without God's permission. And nothing goes on that God don't know anything about. But God is just waiting on us. Paul says, pray. Tell you, never pray. He says, make intercession. Intercede. Entreat God in favor of somebody else. This is what bothers me the most sometimes about believers is that, is that we, we don't know what intercessory prayer is. We don't believe in intercessory prayer. We just pray for those that we know and for ourselves. But the Lord pauses and he says, entreat God on behalf of others. In a, I wish I had five good people up in here. In, in a seed on behalf of somebody. In a sister. Matt. That, 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 that means that, that I'm standing in the gap for somebody who ain't standing for them. I wish I had some help right here. Let me see if I can break it down like I want to. I'm, I'm interceding on behalf of Biden and Whitmer <laughs> yeah. and Nancy Pelosi and, and Schumer. I'm, I'm, I'm interceding on behalf of Dugan. and Y'all got me yet? I'm, I'm, I'm interceding on behalf of those individuals who profess to be leaders, Putin and others. I'm, I'm, I'm interceding. I'm, I'm asking God, God, on the behalf of me for somebody else. Give them wisdom. I'm done. Give them guidance. Give them direction. Give them understanding. Lead them and, and guide them in a way you'd have them, have them to go. He said, don't complain about them. Pray for them. Make petition known for them. Intercede. Entreat. Talk to God on behalf of them. And it might not be always in divine order. He said, but with thanksgiving. Show what you had five years in here. Yeah, yeah. He says, he says, with yeah, thanksgiving. Make sure that it be made, yeah, beloved of God, uh, on all men. Well, I might not like what you're saying, but I thank God you're here. Might not agree with everything that you do, but I thank God you're still here. You might falter along the way, <laughs> yeah, but I turn around and thank God that you're here. <laughs> Can I give me five people real quickly that don't mind telling the Lord thank you? for a president that don't know it all. <laughs> 
thank you for a governor that don't know it all. Thank you for a city council that don't know it all. Thank you for some people that's going to make mistakes along the way. Thank you for even putting them in position and allowing them to do what needs to be done turned around and said to you and I that we ought to give thanks. Yeah. That's all I come to tell Ebenezer on the morning. Stop complaining. Stop grumbling. Yeah. Stop griping. Yeah. Stop thinking that you know it all yeah. and that you got all the answers yeah, to everything that's going on around you. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. I said thank God. Yeah. Prayer let your request be known. Petition, speak on behalf of others. In a treat, God, for those who might not be praying themselves. And then thank God for those who are in authority. I want to close right here by telling you that there are some families that have lost some children. There are some mad gunmen that have lost their minds. But what you fail to realize is that even in your own child's school, it could have been your house. It could have been your family. It could have been your children. It could have been your nieces. It could have been your nephews. It could have been your grands. And while you complaining thank God somebody say thank God thank God for every school security guard thank God for every metal detector thank God for every visionary leader thank God for covering and keeping good morning Ab. I come by to tell you today you ought to pray that's what Paul says you ought to seek God you ought to turn it over to him you ought to give God the praise the glory Glory, and let your request be made known unto him. Anybody glad? I said, anybody glad that we had an intercessor, that we had somebody that entreated the Father on our behalf, on our way to hell, no God on our side, and no heaven in our view. Mama prayed for us, Daddy prayed for us, the preacher prayed for us, the deacon prayed for us, the prayed for us. The enemy prayed for us. But thank God for the intercessor who died for us way out on Calvary. He died that we might live buried. Got up Sunday morning. All power. In his hands. Play your part. Pray. Play your part. Intercede. Make the petition known unto God for others. Hush. If you ain't going to pray, hush. I don't know about you all, but I'm about tired of funerals. Bang our young people. Help me, somebody. Bang our young people. Because somebody keep telling you some stuff. And you walking around talking about what somebody said and what you ain't going to do. And then I get the call because you don't want to do what somebody else told you not to do. Now you go. Pray. If you ain't going to trust God, quit saying it. Quit saying it. Beloved of God, if we believe God, then you got to believe that God put you or put people in our lives that's going to make a difference. I was talking to my little friend the other day. 
So he's a little mortgage investor. And so he was holding a conversation, they know, about vaccinations and why he wasn't going to get it and who he didn't trust. So I turned around and said, well, that's kind of how I feel about you and my money. He looked at me so strange. He's been trying to get me to buy a house. I said, just like you don't trust scientists, but you say God put you in position to bless our people, I trust God. If you're going to get my money, I got to trust God with you with my, with my money. Oh, I know y'all getting tired of me. Don't feel bad. I'm getting tired of y'all. Beloved of God, pray. Pray, believe, pray. Trust God, pray, stand, trust God, entreat, intervene. In all of my 30-some years of pastor, I'm through. Never have I stood and prayed to God like I have since 2020. Calling your name, not saying, Lord, bless the members of New Ebenezer. But calling your name before God, interceding on your behalf, calling your name. God would cover you. God would keep you. While we maneuver through what we are going through, you better start interceding on behalf of others. Pray for the president, pray for the governor, pray for the mayor, pray for the house of rep. Pray, the scripture said, for kings and others in authority. Anybody got a job, put you in authority, let me see your hand. You got a job where, where your job gives you a sense of authority. Anybody, hold your hand up, hold your hand. Don't be afraid, hold your hand up. Well, people got to depend on you for some things. Hold your hand up, hold, hold it up. You got to hold it up. Because, see, the members need to know that you're in an authoritative position. And being in an authoritative position, that while they're praying for others, they need to know to pray for you, too. For you seek God on behalf of all who are in authority. I'm done. You got a part to play. I tell your neighbor, we got a part to play. We got a part. The Apostle Paul says that the church must not just run, skip, jump, and shout. But Paul says the church must pray. Somebody say must pray, must pray. The door is open. The invitation is extended. Maybe you're here. Have not accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. The record said the day that you hear my voice, hard ah, not your heart. The day that you hear the word proclaim, hear it and receive it, and accept the word of God, and allow the word of God to manifest itself in your life. Believe God. Trust God. Know that God is able, and that God will do just what he said he is capable of doing. You hear? You don't know the Lord? Come on and accept him. You're watching. You don't know the Lord? Call us. 313-361-0087. Want to give my life to Christ, Pastor Mills. Put it in the text. If you're watching virtually, put it in the chat section. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to surrender my all unto him. This invitation is for you. This is your invitation. Come on now and accept him. Man, woman, boy, or girl, come on and accept him. This is your invite. Come on and accept him. With words. Oh, yeah. 
your invitation, your invite. You can accept him now as the Lord of your life. Come on, wherever you are. Oh, yeah. Important to me. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord for this season, this time of us gathering and sharing. As we prepare ourselves before offering to receive or to take our communion, we prepare ourselves to commune together. As you start preparing yourself, those who are at home, you start preparing yourself that we might commune together that we might commune together all over the sanctuary. That we might commune together. We prepare ourselves. We prepare ourselves. Communion allows us the opportunity to be able to pause together and to remember the ultimate sacrifice that was made by Jesus the Christ in regard to the remissions of our sins. It gives us the opportunity to reflect back on that gruesome day at Calvary where Christ shed his blood after an anguish beating, kangaroo court, Christ, who could have called a legion of angels to come and stop what seems to be injustice, he says to you and I that he comes to do the will of his father. Nobody takes his life. But he lays it down. In three days, he'll bring it up again. The bread represents the broken body of our Savior. The sacrifice of his body. That you and I might move toward the area of salvation. He says, for as often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in the name of the Father and the Son, the bread. The fruit of the vine, the cup, that represents the blood that was shed for you and for me. Throwing a crown was on his head. Bloodshed, nails in his hands, spikes in his feet, bloodshed, pierced in his side, to out came blood and water, bloodshed. The songwriter says, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The cup represents the shed blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Holy Spirit, we drink. Oh, it was the blood of Jesus the Christ. And the ultimate sacrifice that he made. That allows you and I to come into that committed relationship with him. Just this one verse. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. 
One day I was lost He died upon the cross I know it Oh yeah You should really sing it like you know it It was my Savior's blood It was my Savior's blood It was my Savior's blood For me Oh, one day when I He died upon the cross I know it Come on, put your hands together, man. Bless the Lord. How good he is. It's giving time. It's giving time. It's giving time. It's giving time. We prepare ourselves for giving, whether you're in the sanctuary with us or whether you're preparing to give virtually. We prepare ourselves to give at this particular time. We prepare ourselves to give. We prepare ourselves to give coming into the sanctuary your giving should have taken place. If it did not take place on your way in, you can always hold your hand up. They will get you an envelope and allow you the opportunity to be able to give or they will receive your gifts if your envelope is ready. Those of you all who are watching us virtually, you can prepare yourself to give by way of Givelify uh, as well. Come on, let's stand. You know how we do it. Let's stand in preparation of giving. Let's stand in preparation of giving. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give. Bless now the gifts and the givers. Let it be used in the purpose in which it is received. You get glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. The saints say amen and bless God. Those who need to give, hold it up. They shall assist you real quickly. Hold up your gifts. They shall assist you real quickly in preparation for giving. You shall be assisted real quickly. In preparation for giving. Hold it up. Let's continue to be prayerful for all of those who desire the prayers of the church. Keep lifting Sister Patricia Taylor, Judy, Marla, and Charles, and them in your prayers. Continue to pray for that Taylor family as well. Continue to lift and cover them in prayer. I want you all to pray for Reverend Kelly Jackson and family, the passing of our sister Annie Loritz, very faithful member uh, of our state congress of our Christian education. Uh, services are going to be held on tomorrow at the Greater Burnett Baptist Church. Viewing takes place, I think, today from 1 to 5, I believe it is, from 1 to 5 uh, at, the great, at the New Zion Hill. Greater Zion Hill, Zion Hill, Zion Hill Baptist Church right there on Dickerson in the city of Detroit. If you ever attended our Congress of the Christian Education, Sister Larissa was very faithful to us. So I ask that you all lift them families and certainly cover them in your prayers as only you can do. Come on and stand, won't you? Come on and stand. Pray for Pastor. I'm heading out the door to the Mount Moriah Baptist Church, Woodward Avenue in Highland Park, Michigan as they prepare the phases of start to install their pastor uh, on today. How good the Lord is. Pray for my young people again. Y'all standing by young people. Anybody standing by young people, let me see your hands. Standing by young people, you standing by them. Do this here. Kind of put your hands on them. Put your hands on them. Lord, cover our young people. Young people, say, Lord, cover us. Yeah, say it, young people. Ask the Lord, say, cover us. Pray for each other. Say, cover us. Somebody touch Christian. Lord, cover us. Lord, cover our young people. Lord, cover our young people. Lord, cover our young people. God has spoken. Let the church, let the church, let the church. God has spoken. Listen at this announcement. It is imperative. 
It is imperative that you pick up your packages. It is imperative that you read the materials that are in your package. The third Sunday in December is always our church's uh, Christmas fellowship. There is some information in that package in regard to our church's Christmas fellowship. You must sign up today. You must sign up today and no later than next Sunday. You must sign up uh, for the Christmas fellowship. You'll get information on how we plan to do uh, our Christmas fellowship. That way you are inclusive to what we're doing. I want you to hear me saying, I don't know what's going on. We give out a package every month. Somebody say every month. Every month we give out a package. You all take the packages home and you don't read them. Read what is in the package. Amen. Now may the love of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest rule abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. Every heart says amen, amen, amen. Somebody should be at the table. Somebody.